Hey, this is Herfine forecaster Kevin Wallace with your El Nino update for October 2015. During September, sea surface temperatures remained well above average across the central and eastern Pacific Ocean, reflecting an ongoing strong El Nino event. We continue to see abnormally warm water throughout much of California and Hawaii, although it is down slightly from the record-setting temps we saw in late August and early September. The official forecast from the Climate Prediction Center is for a 95% chance that El Nino will continue through the Northern Hemisphere winter, and the majority of models predict a peak in intensity this fall or early winter. Comparing it to the 1997-98 event, which is the strongest El Nino on record, this event is slightly weaker at this point, although there is still a little bit of time for it to strengthen. Parts of California saw good surf from Hurricane Linda in early September, although otherwise the eastern and central Pacific tropics have been relatively quiet for the past couple weeks. One recent event that has been very interesting was Hurricane Oho in the central Pacific. Not only was Oho one of the northernmost east or central Pacific hurricanes that we've ever seen, also took on a rare northeast track and overall is a good indicator that El Nino is alive and well. Although we are past the climatological peak season in the tropics, we've still got plenty of time to go before the door is completely shut and we expect above average activity to continue in the Pacific. We're starting to see stronger and more frequent frontal storm activity in the North Pacific and some of our first north and northwest swells of the season have made their presence felt over the back half of September. Note that during mid-October and November 1997, we did see enhanced storm and swell activity in the Northeast Pacific and North Atlantic, but the strongest signals typically occur after the holidays. Over in the Atlantic, we have seen a prolonged run of good surf during the past week or two, especially for Florida, and due at least part from Hurricane Joaquin. While El Nino typically suppresses tropical activity of the Atlantic, which has been the case for most of the past few months, that doesn't mean it will pitch a complete shutout. Going a bit further out, we generally see enhanced wind swell episodes from Gulf Coast or Southeast low pressure areas due to stronger than normal Southeast branch of the jet stream, which can also be beneficial for Puerto Rico surf. Similar to the Pacific, the strongest signals occur after the holidays. As always, we need to stress that no two El Ninos are the same. We still have to predict storms and waves as we always have, so be sure to stay tuned to the Surfline forecast for the most recent updates on day-to-day -day surf.